Well, here we have a very special and rare treat, an autumn bronze bucket seat 1966 Tornado. If you note the license plate, it says 66 COTY, car of the year. This was Motor Trend's car of the year in 1966. And it pioneered a number of styling elements, most notably these wheel arches, huge wheel arches that protrude from the body, which, you know, look at this Cadillac next to it, which is about the same year, not the exact, but close enough. And you get the point of how revolutionary this car was from a styling perspective. Those wheel arches have been imitated by so many different competitors since the Tornado introduced them, including the Germans. Now look at this interior. This car is a bucket seat interior with a console, as you can see. Super, super rare. One of, I think, about 50. This is also a deluxe interior. Very handsome. This is a one-year-only interior before Olds changed it in 1967 to have more button tufting and be more luxurious. Some folks thought it wasn't luxurious enough. Also notice this driver area that I just drew my finger around. It's all in black. Everything from the floor mat to the instrument binnacle to the steering wheel. Kind of giving you the visual feel that this is the command center for the driver. It wasn't really a driver-oriented cockpit like the 69 Grand Prix would be, but at least it gave some sort of visual distinction for the driver's area versus the passenger's area. And under the hood here, we have Oldsmobile's top dog, 425 cubic inch engine, making 385 horsepower in the Tornado, which was 10 more than what was in the Starfire, 20 more than what was standard in the 98, as well as the various 88s. The 425 would last through the 1967 model year, before in 1968, Oldsmobile introduced its 455. And this switch here is for the kickdown for the Turbo Hydromatic 425 transmission as well as the variable pitch stator and the torque converter that these had. They have two different stall speeds. Pretty unique feature on the Turbo Hydromatic 400s and 425s. You can see there that the transmission is coupled to the back of the engine. Then there's a HIVO chain that drives the actual transmission portion of it, which points towards the front of the car. Taking a look at the inside, you can see this car has got manual air conditioning. It doesn't have the Comfortron air conditioning. These cars could be equipped with the automatic climate control, which will be called Comfortron. And it does have that wheel is a tilt telescoping wheel. That center ring unlocks the telescoping function. Just a handsome interior overall, and again, a super rare bucket seat car. The Tornado ended up proving quite popular with buyers in 1966, sold about 40,000 cars, many more deluxe cars like this than non-deluxe cars, about 35,000 deluxe hardtop coupes versus 6,000 regular hardtop coupes. You can also see the trunk louvers on this car, which was an early version of GM's flow-through ventilation system that they made standard across the lineup in 1971. This Tornado has no vent windows, nor did GM cars in 1971. And I think GM got the trunk louver idea, probably from this car and the Riviera had those in the same place. But in 1971, that design on the trunk louvers was very ill-fated uh, for a number of reasons and was discontinued after just one model year. As each year ticked by, this version of the Tornado would change pretty significantly. As I mentioned, in 67, the interior would change, including a different steering wheel. The seat stitch pattern, the door panels would all change on the inside. On the outside, the front of the Tornado would get an egg crate grill, and the headlights would lose their eyebrows over top of them as well. In 1968, the whole front end really changed on the car, and the headlights were hidden behind panels that were effectively formed the grill, and the car got the 455, as I mentioned. In 1969, the back end changed, and it got little winglets, if you will. And then in 1970, the front end would change again, and these pronounced wheel arches would become more squarish with that one-year-only revision. Pretty amazing they did that for just a single year. And while I at least think that all the Tornados from 66 to 70 are quite handsome, this 66 is undoubtedly the purest of the design and the wheel arches are certainly the most imitated. I think almost every American automobile company, including European automakers, imitated these wheel arches in their forms over the years. 
it was just such a dramatic departure and such clean body sides versus what was being produced by the remaining domestics and overseas in the time that it came out. Overall, the Tornado was a pretty good seller in these years too, generally selling somewhere between about 25,000 units and 40,000 units. And uh, it started trailing off kind of with each revision to the car. By 1968, the car was selling about 26,000 units a year. 1969 was selling about 28,000 a year. In the final year, 1970, it sold about 25,000 units a year again. So not all that great of a showing as it aged. And frankly, a lot of people don't like the next generation Tornado that came out in 71. But after the first year in 1971... In 1972, that Tornado sold almost 50,000 units. It was really doubling the volume of this generation, in spite of it being significantly more corpulent, shall we say, and larger, as Oldsmobile was forced to share a lot of components with the full-size B-body platform. Similar story for the Boat Tail Riviera, as well as the Cadillac Eldorado. And I wonder if some of that is just because these vehicles have a relatively compact interior dimensions. Certainly if you're trying to put people in the back seat, these cars are not great places for that. And also the ride on the Tornado and the Eldorado in particular, they shared similar suspension setups, which were longitudinally mounted torsion bars up front and a very strange single leaf rear spring, single leaf on either side in the rear, coupled with a three quarter length frame and, you know, consequently, the ride on these is not that great. A lot of people say, oh, I bet it floats like it rides on a cloud. No, these do not. These are actually pretty stiff rides, not just the Tornado, but also the Eldorado. And maybe it was a bit too firm for the average customer of the era. And they're also not all that refined. You get some impact harshness and boominess inside the cabin. If you're going over, let's say, less than ideal roads, likely due to the fact that it's not a fully isolated perimeter frame. And that's one thing that the next generation, the 71s gained, was a full perimeter frame, as well as full coil suspension, which really helped the ride out versus these vehicles. And as I mentioned, they also got larger, so they had more interior cubic feet, which probably pleased many of the customers of the era. In any case, thanks for watching this brief video of this beautiful 66 Tornado. Thanks again, and take care. Thanks again for watching this video on a beautiful 66 Autumn Bronze Tornado. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help YouTube serve this up to more people like you. And until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care.